Hey everybody, in today's video I gotta explain mouse events in JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The first thing I need to discuss is event listeners. An event listener listens for specific events to create interactive web pages. A few types of events we'll discuss are click events, when we click on something, mouse over is when we hover over something, and mouse out is when we're hovering over something, and then leave that element. To add an event listener, you'll use the add event listener method pass in an event type, including but not limited to. This could be clicking on something, hovering over something, or leaving the confines of an element, and then a callback to a function. What do you want to do when you interact with something? For example, I could use the click event and then change the color of something when I click on it. Going to our HTML file, I will create a div element for a box. The ID of this div element will be my box. The text on the box will be click me. Then for fun, I'll add an emoji because I like emojis. Let's apply some CSS styling because it's kind of small. Let's select the ID of my box, change the background color to light green or some other color of your choosing. Set a width of 300 pixels, a height of 300 pixels. I'll increase the font size to something large like 4.5 REM. I'll set the font weight to be bold. I'll use Flexbox, display flex. Align items in the center and text align center. That is good enough for now. Be sure to save everything. We're going to select the ID of my box. We'll store that as a constant. Const my box equals, we'll need to select it by accessing the DOM, document.get element by ID. I will select the ID of my box, and then we can work with it easily. We'll take my box, add an event listener. That's a built in method. My box dot add event listener. We need to pass in an event type and a callback to a function. I want to do something when I click on this box. The event type is going to be click. And now we need a callback to a function. We'll define a function to change the background color. Function change color. There is going to be one parameter, an event. Then we will pass in a callback to change color. Now the event parameter, event is an object. It's provided to us automatically by the web browser when something happens when an event occurs, like when I click on something. Event is an object that contains information about something that happens, that event. For this demonstration, temporarily, I'm going to console.log my event. So let's click on the box, then go to inspect, console, and here's my event. When we clicked on that box, the web browser provided us with an event object. It's a pointer event. This object contains details about what happened exactly. For example, we have the target. What did we click on? We clicked on the div element with an ID of my box. And here are all the properties and methods of that box. That's the target. We have a timestamp of when the click occurred, the type of the event click, which matches up with the event type, and coordinates of where we clicked on the screen. Event is an object that's going to be provided to us through the web browser automatically. We don't need to explicitly pass in an event object with this callback. It's provided to us behind the scenes. I'm going to change the background color of our box when we click on it. We will access our event object that's provided to us, access the target. The target is what we clicked on. There's information about our target within the event object. Then I will take the style of the target set the background color property to be a different color. I will set it to be red, but I prefer the shade of tomato because I like that color. Now when I click on the box, the background color changes. But why stop there? Let's also change the text content. I'll add one more statement to the change color function. Again, we will access our event, access its target, access the text content of the target to be Ouch. And then I'll add an emoji. That's a good one. When I click on this box, 
Not only does the color change, but the text too. Now you don't necessarily need to pass in a callback. You can also pass in an anonymous function or even an arrow function. So let's copy these two lines of code. We'll reuse it later. We no longer need to define a function. Within the event listener, instead of passing in a callback, we'll pass in an anonymous function. We have one parameter, an event. That's going to be provided to us. When we click on my box, do this. Change the background color and the text. Now, we could even use an arrow function. I have a preference for arrow functions because they're concise with their syntax. With an arrow function, we have one parameter, an event. If you have a single parameter, you don't need to enclose it within a set of parentheses. We have one parameter of event, then do this, do all this code. And that should still work. When I click on the box, the color changes, as well as the text. So when you add an event listener, you can pass in a callback or an anonymous function or an arrow function. It depends on what your preferences are. Personally, I like arrow functions. We have a few other mouse events to discuss. Mouse over and mouse out. Mouse over is when you hover your cursor over something. So let's take my box, add a new event listener. An element can have more than one event listener. Add event listener. We have an event and a callback as arguments. The event is going to be mouse over. For the callback, I'll use an arrow function. We have one parameter of event, arrow, do this. Let's copy these two lines of code. I'll change the background color to be yellow, like it's a warning, and the text content to be don't do it. That's a good face. When I hover my cursor over this element, the background color and the text is going to change. The event that occurred is mouse over. It's when you hover your cursor over something. Mouse out is when you leave a specified element. So when I leave the box, I would like to change back the background color and the text content. We'll add an additional event listener. My box add event listener. The event type is going to be mouse out. Then I'll write an arrow function. We're provided with an event, arrow, do this. Let's change the background color and the text content. I will revert the background color to be light green. And the text to be click me. Whatever the text content originally was. When I hover my cursor over this element, we get that mouse over event. But when I leave, we get the mouse out event. When I click on this box, we get the click event. When I leave the box, we get the mouse out event again to reset it, essentially. For the last part of this demonstration, we're going to create a button. When we click or interact with the button, then we'll change a separate element, this box. So within our HTML file, let's create a button with text of click me. I will give this button a unique ID of my button and I'll increase the font size with CSS. We will select my button. I will increase the font size to be 3 REM, just so it's not so small. Let's select the ID of my button, const my button equals document.getElementById my button. I'll add the event listener to my button, not my box. If I was to interact with this button with the way it is now, when I hover over the button, we've created a mouse over event and the button changes. When I click on the button, we're changing the HTML and CSS of the button. Because the button is what has the event listener, we're selecting the target of the event to change, which is the button. That is what we interacted with. When we interact with our box, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any event listeners. The button does though. We're going to replace the event target with my box. When we interact with the button, change the background color and the text content of my box. So then when I hover over the button, the box changes. When I leave, it reverts back to normal. When I click on the button, then we've created a click event. 
All right, everybody. So that is an introduction to mouse related events. You'll need to add an event listener. An event listener listens for specific events to create interactive web pages. A few events we've covered include click, mouse over, and mouse out. To add an event listener, take an element, use the built in add event listener method, pass in an event type, and a callback, anonymous function, or an arrow function to do something. And well, everybody, those are mouse related events in JavaScript.